Welcome to the Wireless Land News Desk for July 12, 2019. My name is Tom Carpenter. I'm the CTO at CWNP. And this week in the news, I'd like to share three things with you. First of all, a recent report was released indicating that automotive smart antenna market is going to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 14.6% through 2026. Now, when they talk about these antennas, there are several things that they suggest will drive the growth of antennas. And one of these things is flow sensors and the use of wireless communications from those flow sensors, as well as, of course, the automotive market and other spaces that are driving the use of smart antennas. Now, smart antennas are not necessarily smart antennas. The intelligence is behind the antennas. I'll talk more about that in a vlog that will be released here in the coming week or so. But for now, just know that there's actually a focus on the antenna market, not just the wireless device market, but the need for antennas in those devices. Now, the second thing this week is that there are some 60 gigahertz devices getting approved by the FCC. These devices are based on 802.11ay. Now, if you haven't heard of that, it's the update to 802.11ad, taking it up to around 10 gigabits per second throughput. And so this is going to be something to watch and see how this works. There's talk about using it for Wi-Fi distribution in densely populated areas, discussions about using it for VR and other technologies. So we'll see how this plays out in the coming year or two, but we're starting to see these devices come to market. The next and final thing is that the Wireless Broadband Alliance has released a Wi-Fi 6 Deployment Guidelines and Scenarios document, or white paper. And this white paper is about 40 pages long. It does have some recommendations. There are strengths and weaknesses to the white paper. I'll suggest that you read it for yourself. I did notice in some of the areas where there can be a lot of maybe division or contention, they simply don't make a statement of recommendation. Being a guidelines document, I kind of expected there to be at least a general recommendation that for most scenarios it works this way or these types of scenarios it works this way. One area in particular was whether or not to use 80 and 160 megahertz channels. It was just left with giving you the information about how it might work if you do choose to use them and then gave no real recommendation about whether you should actually use them or not, at least not in absolutes. But there's a lot of good technical information inside of this document, and it is well worth reading. And some very good and skilled technicians were involved in either the writing or editing process with it. You can download the document by going to wballiance.com and then clicking on the Resource Center, and you'll have to register. But once you do, you can download the document in PDF. You can see it's about 40 pages long. And so it's going to go through several different areas, such as channelization, AP placement, things like that. I highly encourage you to get your hands on this document. Well, that's all I have for the Wireless Land News Desk this week. I'll be with you again next week on the 19th. And until then, if you haven't registered for Wi-Fi Trek in Nashville, Tennessee this year, make sure you get over to CWNP.com and take care of that registration. And I'll see you next week.